Well, friends, today we are going to discuss a book written by me, Liberal Theory of the State. We know that nowadays the most important or dominant political theory is of liberalism. Although it is facing many challenges, but no other political theory has replaced it yet. Although there are challenges of terrorism, challenges of dictatorship, challenges of uh, other authoritarian ideologies, but no one has been able to replace it as a dominant philosophy of the world. So I've written this book, uh, Liberal Theory of the State. What is this actually in the liberal theory? Uh, the book was published last year uh, and it has got seven chapters. First is, uh, after introduction, I've tried to explain the idea of limit on the state why there is a necessary necessity to limit the powers and functions of the state. And even if we say that we are in a welfare state society and a welfare state does many things, but even these functions should not be uh, uh, free in such sense that only individuals wish can apply these functions in the society. There should must be a procedure, there must be a law which, which should be substantive as well as procedural uh, so that the state cannot become a dictatorial or an authoritarian state. Then the second chapter is about the procedure of limit on the state. Now, once we accept that uh, a state should be a limited state, then the next, next question arises that how to proceed to have such a limitation on the state. And in this chapter, I have dealt with the procedure, which I believe is the democratic procedure. Only through democracy, uh, we can limit a state by participation, by deliberations, by constitutional um, provisions. Uh, we can always limit uh, the power of the state. Then comes the third chapter, which is important. That is the challenges to the state, because there are many challenges which are coming up uh, in contemporary times. And I have dealt with certain challenges, uh, like for instance, challenges, uh, freedom is also a challenge, uh, that how much uh, freedom of an individual should be curbed and how much freedom should be given to an individual, whether freedom means simply absence of restraint or freedom should be given for something. How we uh, regulate freedom with equality and with the powers of the state. And there is an interesting uh, assessment of Amartya Sen's concept of development as freedom, because he argued that uh, it is only through um, development that we can express our freedom. If there is no development, there is freedom is in only uh, in, the, in pages or in a theoretically there is a freedom, but otherwise there is no freedom to an individual who is poor, who is not getting benefit of the development. Then whether uh, there should be a provision in the constitution uh, that in certain circumstances states orders can be uh, challenged and if there is no provision even then whether states should be tolerant enough to accept certain uh, uh, disobedience uh, uh, to its of its uh, policies because if large number of people think that there are certain policies which are not in the interest of the people, they can always go for disobedience. So what is the theory of disobedience? Especially Gandhian theory and Rawlsian theory and other uh, contemporary theories of disobedience that I have also dealt with in this chapter. Then comes the fourth chapter that is pressure on the state. This is pressure on the state. Now the pressure on the state are many. One of the recent uh, important pressure on liberal theory is of the rise of identity politics. Whether politics is uh, uh, a new type of politics we are witnessing, that is identity politics, and which has become uh, more and more important after the dismantling of Soviet Union. Because the new states which have come up after uh, diso disorganization of uh, Soviet Union are primarily based on ethnic nationalism and they are that is basically their identity they are trying to um, give their identity 
in the form of ethnicity or religion or some other factors. But the, the core question is that identity has become most very important. Now in identity politics, there are two types of versions of that, how to deal with identity politics, because identity politics is based on group identity. And in liberal theory, in the classical liberal theory, there is no place for a group identity. The only identity in classical liberal theory is of an individual. So how to deal with this? When group identity becomes real, it becomes important in society, then how to deal with the group identity in the liberal theory? That is the question which is dealt with in this chapter. Uh, previously, uh, in the initial stage, the identity was basically that if there is a minority which wants to assert the identity, then the majority in the state just tolerate their existence. But now, this toleration is converted into recognition. Now the minority groups, minority of religion, minority of language, minority of nationality, uh, whatever, minority of race, all these minority groups have also become developed and stabilized themselves in different countries. So they now assert that it is not simply, uh, we will not accept that uh, the majority is simply tolerating them. They want recognition of what they have done to the development of the country which they have adopted. So it's a toleration versus recognition debate which I have dealt with and also <coughs> about uh, how identity politics is uh, uh, placed in the politics of difference uh, uh, because politics of difference is uh, Iris Young has given a very important contribution in the liberal theory by talking about politics of difference and whether the identity politics is also compatible with democracy and if it is compatible then to what extent. Then comes the fifth chapter that is the foundation of the state. Now in the foundation of the state, uh, I have taken Rawlsian theory of justice because justice is one of the most important foundation of a state in today's world. So I've dealt with concept of justice, Rawlsian theory, Nogic's entitlement theory, Michael Boylan's just theory, uh, Nancy Fraser's theory, and Will Kimilka's group theory of justice. Then comes the sixth chapter that is the crisis of the state. The state everywhere is facing a crisis. Now what type of crisis we are facing? In that, I have just pointed out certain um, important uh, issues which are coming up in contemporary political theory, uh, which have bearing upon the concept of state. Uh, for instance, a nationalism. Now nationalism is dividing the world or not. And the concept of sovereignty, whether in nation, nations are sovereign in their own or not, that is another important aspect. In a globalized world, whether the mm, mm, nationalism is, uh, is, is a viable alternative, a viable existence or not. Then we have citizens. We are now talking of uh, when, the, the, when the question of sovereignty is, is, is taken, then we also say that there are certain uh, options uh, where the citizens of a country they go and they 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 argue out that they are not citizen of a particular country they are basically a cosmopolitan like uh, in, in the Greek city states we know that uh, one of the philosophers just said that uh, well I am a cosmopolitan person I am not confined to a Greek city state there is another important question which is coming up now which modernity used to think that we have done away with the concept of religion and the role of religion, how religion, what role religion places in contemporary uh, political theory. Habermas and others argued that modernity will wipe out all the types of religions because religion is basically an irrational activity. But we witness in contemporary world that religion is coming back and religion is becoming more and more important in deciding the direction of politics of a particular country. So what is religion from the social scientist point of view? How religion is playing a role in the working of a state and whether it is advisable to use religion for the welfare of the society or not? That is the question which I have dealt with in, the, in this uh, paper. 
Then uh, the last question which is important is uh, which everybody talks uh, nowadays about is climate change. Whether climate change which is now becoming a reality uh, and which is now become dangerous, more and more dangerous people are accepting the danger which is climate change is posing on them. Whether climate change is important in conceptualizing the theory of state or not. Whether it has affected a theory of state or not. So these are the six chapters which explained uh, different aspects of the liberal theory of the state. Now the last chapter is then what is the theory of the state? Whether we can, because we have dealt with that there are so many pair problems which are coming up in liberal theory. A liberal theory is in under pressure, liberal theory is facing some crisis. So whether there is an alternative to liberal theory or what we can do to improve the, the decaying condition of, the, of liberal theory. This is the question which I have dealt with in the last chapter that is a theory of the state. How can we make a theory of the state out of such situation? First is that we will have to concentrate on some questions which we have to answer. Whether, these, uh, whether the answers are uh, good enough to formulate a new political theory or not. The first is what type of human nature we perceive. Do we have a universal nature? or we don't have a universal nature and what is common to all human beings except one thing which is base, which is the basis of modernity that is rationality. Do we have anything common among all human beings? Do they respond in the same manner in all crisis situation or not? The second is the question of individual versus community. Whether individual identity is formed by its own or it is formed by the influences of a community in which it live, he lives. The third is how much should the state interfere in human affairs? Whether state should be value neutral, minimum or proactive. For instance, when we talk of liberal state, whether it is a duty of the liberal state to see that in, a, in the society in which liberal state exists, the, uh, the people should have a value which we call liberal value or people can have different values also and they can have a liberal state, whether it is possible or not, that is the most important question. If people do not have liberal values and they argue out on the basis of their culture that we have different values which are not liberal. For instance, we know many in many cultures there are certain uh, conditions uh, for women especially uh, that uh, are not uh, in tune with the liberal value of men and women relationship. So whether uh, state should interfere in the in the cultural milieu of the society to make them nearer to liberal values or not which means whether a state should be proactive in creating liberal values or a state should be neutral and should confine itself to the political affair only then comes another question which is that <clears throat> how much control should be given to people over the state in other words to what extent democracy is workable? Uh, there are two uh, variant of this, uh, the answers which are given historically. One is that only elite can govern better and masses can only interfere, intervene only when there is a crisis. Otherwise, otherwise it is not possible. So, uh, the, the state should not be given uh, it should not be controlled by masses as such because masses will not uh, be able to function properly. Then fifth is what is the aim of the state? Is it justice, equality, freedom, welfare of all or what it is? So we should be very clear about it and how to define it. I think Rawlsian theory uh, uh, very beautifully has dealt with this question and I, uh, extend, I, I accept his theory to a larger extent. Then the sixth is human beings are not motivated by reason alone. So sh that we know that so it political theory can be formed on non-rational elements of human beings or not. That is the important thing. And the last one is whether there is a role of history or culture in the making of the state. Is it possible to create a universal theory or not? Now all these issues are important and I have dealt with, with them. And in the last what I argued out is that if we want to have a theory of a state, a new theory of a state which is essentially a liberal theory but which should be, the basis of that should be different. I have tried to argue out that 
liberal theories foundations uh, have seen many changes it is started with rights as the foundation of the liberal theory in john rawls in, in john locke's theory in the 18th century then in 19th century bentham and mill they provided utility as the basis of uh, liberal theory and then in 1971 john rawls provided justice as the basis of liberal theory now i argue out in 2023 or 22 that non violence or ahinsa should be the basis of a new liberal state now what does it mean how ahinsa can replace justice as the basis of the state is this is what is this is what i have written about 30 40 pages and if you are interested you should read this book this is a very new in, and a unique contribution in my eyes uh, you may agree you may disagree but uh, this is what i think and i feel that it is my duty as a political science professor uh, that after such a long span of teaching uh, time well, uh, almost 40 years uh, i should come out with my own ideas about what is uh, liberal theory of the state thank you